Hello. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today I'm going to be talking about Ritalin. Is it really a stimulant or not? So I'll be talking for probably less than 20 minutes. If there's questions that come in, you can type them in. This will be posted on YouTube and Facebook afterwards. So I usually start with the take home for people with ADHD who don't want to stick around for the whole 20 minutes. And my answer, which is pretty much in opposition to the whole ADHD and I'd say psychiatry establishment is that on most measures we can assess Ritalin is not a high powered stimulant and probably shouldn't be controlled to the same extent that Adderall is. So, jumping into it. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, we don't have firm, precise definitions of what a stimulant is. The most general one is that it's any medication or substance that activates the brain, activates the central nervous system. A little more narrowly, we have a, that the term stimulant is equated with the term sympathomimetic, and sympathomimetic doesn't mean that you like people who pretend they're stuck in boxes and can't speak. Um, sympathomimetic means imitating the sympathetic nervous system, and the sympathetic nervous system, again, is that fight or flight system that causes blood flow to go to the big muscles, causes less blood flow to conscious thought, shuts down your digestive system, pumps up your blood pressure, increases your heart rate, um, makes your liver dump more glucose into the body so you're prepared to run or go away. And a whole host of drugs, things like caffeine, things like nicotine, things like theophylline and tea have stimulant activities. When we are talking neuropharmacologically about stimulants, so we tend to consider the stimulants to be powerfully sympathomimetic, strong potential for addiction and abuse, which is why they're um, Schedule II controlled substances, and categorically different from the non-stimulants we use to treat ADD, things like Stratera or Guanfacine or Clonidine or Modafinil or Bupropion or um, Duloxetine. So, Looks like I'm having some connectivity problems, so I'll try to talk quickly on this one, um, and hopefully we won't be re disconnected again. So, what I would say is, if, if, if you look at the mode of action, what do the amphetamines, so I would classify the amphetamines are worthy of the title stimulants or classification as stimulants. The amphetamines are not only norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitors, so they're blocking the reuptake of those two neurotransmitters. They are also interacting at the vesicular level to cause a greater release of those neurochemicals than would normally be produced. So there is not just, again, more norepinephrine and dopamine available or available for a longer time, but a surge, a, a really a greater amount that's available. Most of the accounts of what methylphenidate or Ritalin do are that it is simply a, not simply, that it is a dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, that it's about two or three times stronger on dopamine than norepinephrine, which is about what amphetamine is to with that ratio. But again, that without any of that vesicular transport action, without any forcing excessive release. So on that neurochemical level, you would expect methylphenidate to be more similar to stratero atomoxetine, which is primarily a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, or to be propion, wellbutrin, which is a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor, or to um, cymbalta duloxetine, which is a primarily norepinephrine and serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So when we look at 
efficacy. How well do these drugs work for ADHD? And unfortunately, many of the meta-analyses, many of the overviews lump the stimulants as far and away the most effective medications for ADHD, right in the middle up here. And again, this is fairly consistent and all the non-stimulants are less effective. If you look at those numbers though, what comes out is that it's Adderall, which is amphetamine, dextroware, the VOWER combination of the two, amphetamine, which is far and away the most efficacious in virtually any ADHD study that's been looked at. And then we have a substantially lower tier. And if you look at the numbers, Ritalin methylphenidate's a little better than some of the other non-stimulants, but it, it is closer in efficacy to those non-stimulants than it is to Ritalin, I mean to Adderall. So we have Adderall here, we have Ritalin, and Ritalin may be at the top of our non-stimulants, um, but it is lumped closer to them and less effective for a wide range of um, different measures looking at efficacy in ADHD, whether they're ADHD symptom scores, whether they're um, overall decrease in psychiatric symptoms, whether there are levels of functioning scores. So on an efficacy level, Ritalin is not behaving like Adderall is. It's behaving like a weaker version, more like a, quote, non-stimulant. If we look at the side effects, and I'm not going to talk about the common side effects, so there are many of the non-stimulant stimulants have similar common side effects. They can make people jittery, they can make them anxious, they can suppress appetite, so they, they can have some pathomimetic effects. Um, um, but if we look at the two uncommon but much more serious side effects, and I, those would be both addiction and psychosis, my overall claim again is that Adderall, amphetamine is way up here, and Ritalin, by comparison, is similar to the non-stimulants in those effects. So the first one is addiction, and unfortunately we don't have, or at least I haven't been able to find quickly summarized you know, rates of addiction for kids who are taking Ritalin for years versus rates of addiction for kids or adults who are taking Adderall for years. Um, that, that data may be out there, I'm just having trouble finding it definitively in clear-cut ways. However, if you look at addiction experts based on looking at propensity for addiction or likelihood for addiction or strength of addiction based largely on animal models or some isolated, you know, few volunteers in a laboratory situation giving them doses and measuring craving or measuring me brain activities, uh, measures of brain activity, or again, primarily from, from rodent and other animal research, um, amphetamine, Adderall, is much more, ranked much more strongly potentially addicting than is Ritalin. Not that Ritalin has no potential. And there, again, it may be many of the non-stimulants that we're talking about, so Wellbutrin, Stratera, most of these scales have no potential for addiction. Modafinil, there's some debate as to whether there's some or low. So again, I would put methylphenidate Ritalin as at the very best intermediate between moderately higher potential for addiction with Adderall, um, whether it's solidly in the non-stimulant category in that ranking, but it's certainly closer to it in, instead of a elevated rate. And to remind, since, since addiction is such a hot button issue and a source of major objection to use these medications, the important thing is to say there is even though Adderall itself has a potential for addiction, it's measurably clearly, both in the laboratory and in the real world, substantially lower than the potential for addiction of the street stimulants, which would be um, cocaine or methamphetamine. Um, and the other thing my reading of the literature suggests, we know 
In America, addictive problems are pretty common, as in many other Western countries, we're doing a little worse than many of them. Um, something in the order of 15 to 20 percent of people wind up with a problem, whether it's alcohol or some other substance abuse. But almost all the evidence is quite strong showing that having ADHD close to doubles your likelihood for developing an addictive disorder. So overall rates among kids or adults with ADHD rather than the, in the 15 to 20 percent range are closer to 30 to 40 percent. And again, some worries are that Ritalin is going to be a gateway drug leading to other more abusive or detrimental or destructive drugs. Most of the evidence so far indicates that actually being less impulsive, being able to make more considered thoughts, maybe being less susceptible to peer pressure, maybe a whole host of other things that treatment with effective ADD medication um, in, produces. <clears throat> anyway, the evidence that I've seen indicates that being on these controlled substances, either Adderall-based products or Ritalin-based products during childhood and during adulthood reduces your likelihood of running into a, subs a substance abuse disorder. So enough said about substance abuse. abuse. The other um, bad side effect, uncommon side effect of stimulants, which I think the ADD field has chronically underaddressed and tried to sweep under the rug and ignore, is the risk of stimulant-induced psychosis. Um, so a couple things there. Most studies suggest that ADD itself increases the likelihood of have developing a psychotic disorder compared to the background population. It's certainly not a majority. It's certainly a rare occurrence even there, but having ADHD statistically makes you more likely to develop psychosis. And there have been a number of studies, meta-studies, analyses, looking at the risk for developing psychosis when you are taking methylphenidate, Ritalin, and all of the studies that have been published in the last five years that I can find in all the meta-analyses have failed to find any increased rate of psychosis while people are taking Ritalin products. <clears throat> in contrast, and again, this is understudied, so we don't know the actual rates, but some of the studies suggest about one out of 500 people um, on Adderall amphetamine-based products develop a psychotic disorder, a schizophrenic-like picture where hallucinations, um, delusions, out of touch with reality. So that's a substantial difference, and again, that would put Categorically, if we're going to put things into categories, Ritalin categorically would seem to fit more with the non-stimulants in terms of the psychosis risk and in contrast to Adderall, which would be more like the street stimulants, which also have a risk of psychosis. And again, like the addiction situation, Adderall itself is clearly safer both with respect to addiction and with respect to psychosis than the street stimulants of methamphetamine or cocaine. Um, a few other things. There have been several case reports written up about um, methylphenidate Ritalin appearing to trigger psychotic episodes, so I'm not saying it's completely free of that risk. One of the reassuring things is that and again, a contrast to the what I see in stimulant-induced psychosis with amphetamine, um, most of the case reports that have been written up show that stopping Ritalin resolved, in and of itself, resolved the psychotic symptoms fairly quickly. In contrast, with amphetamine-induced psychosis, very commonly symptoms persist for days, weeks, months in the, after you've stopped the medication, and um, a few recent studies have suggested that if you follow these people out 15 or 20 years with amphetamine-induced psychosis, something like 20% of them are in a full-blown chronic 
schizophrenic-like state. So in summary, I would say both by mechanism of action, by efficacy for treating ADHD for serious ADD symptoms, Ritalin shouldn't be lumped with Adderall. Ritalin is not acting like a, quote, stimulant, again, using the narrow sense of stimulant to mean a powerfully acting sympathomimetic that also has potential for addiction and abuse. Um, I'm not completely advocating that we should change the schedule of uh, controlled substance severity that Ritalin's placed under. Um, and one final note is Ritalin, which is a brand name for methylphenidate, probably should be called Ritalin, given that Ritalin, the naming of it was um, Leandro Panzoni, and I hope I'm not, or Panzione, sorry, um, discovered it in 60, 70 years ago, named it after his wife, who was taking it, or, or wound up taking it for hypotension to increase her blood pressure. It actually was a whole decade after it was discovered before it was classified as a stimulant. So um, I'll pause a second to see if any questions are coming in right now. Um, So I'm seeing one question, someone's really having a hard time deciding whether to put my 12-year-old on ADD medication. And I think that's a wonderful question. It's an individual question that you, your family, your doctor should decide. The information I want to provide or to help with that is that I mean, one of the biggest fears is that these are drugs that are going to cause brain damage, make my kid an addict, do something horrible. As I just said, the addiction data, I think, is fairly robust that the kids who are on, kids who genuinely have ADHD, who are on stimulants, have lower rates of developing drug addiction problems than kids who do not get stimulant treatment for their ADHD stimulant, including Ritalin as a stimulant. Secondly, there are more than 30 studies looking, these are neuroanatomic studies looking at the brains of kids who have ADHD, comparing kids who took um, stimulants, and again, pumping Ritalin as a stimulant, Ritalin or Adderall, during childhood, and then reassessing those brains towards the end of childhood or early you know, young adulthood, late adolescence, the studies varied somewhat. But with one or two exceptions where they didn't discern any difference, all the other studies showed brains that looked more normal at the end of adolescence for the group of kids who took medication, stimulant medication, com contrasting those again to the kids who were not on stimulant medication for their ADHD, um, which puts the whole modern worry about it on its head or flips it around backwards, one interpretation, which I think is valid, of the data would say you may be destining your kid to a future of having ADHD indefinitely if you don't treat them with these medications, whereas some kids will be, we are probably enhancing the likelihood of complete resolution of ADHD by the end of childhood for some kids because they were treated. So that's what I'll say there. Um, I will be back next week talking about, oh yeah, distractibility and whether that's really the core of ADHD or not. Um, stay healthy, stay happy, and I hope this was recording because it looks like I'm getting signals. Bye.